Toby Northern YouTube. How you doing everybody? This is Toby Northern. I'm gonna do this one and I wanted to break this down a little more in depth because I had a phone call with some other people that are writing and messaging. Somebody asked, they hadn't been on a long road trip in a while, several years, and they wanted to know any advice for packing. So we're gonna cover the bag, we're gonna cover some key items, clothing, uh, and some shipping and, and some other stuff. So the bag, I'm gonna show you some pictures here. These are just various pictures of some different types of bags you can get, and it's gonna depend upon every person's packing styles, what they prefer to travel with, and I, I, I will say that as a default for everything I'm about to cover. Um, there are sissy bar bags, there's bags that fit on the passengers, on a back on a passenger seat if you've got one, you can put them on the touring pack, it depends on what kind of bike you have, but most of the time you'll see a lot of people just doing tour packs or sissy bar bags that just go up, strap on that sissy bar. Um, these I've got, we've got three or four different types here and these are the pictures I'm showing you. Um, different sizes, different shapes, uh, different storage amounts. Again, it all that's all kind of depend upon you as a person. What do you travel? Are you a light traveler? Do you prefer to have a lot of clothing as a backup? Everybody's different. so. Having said that's the bag piece. So just the key is you want to make sure it's a solid material of the bag. The, the bag is sturdy. The framing is sturdy. You want to make sure that if it's a sissy bar bag, you've got some amount of um, packing stuff like there are rather there, a lot of them have these Velcro straps that you can strap around the sissy bar that kind of start the lockdown process. Um, there's various ones. Make sure the key is, like I said, make sure that you want to make sure you have one that will have a waterproof bag that can go over it if the thing itself is not waterproof. So some key items to bring up, okay? Hygiene. You want to think about this, but you know what? I don't really need to cover hygiene, you know? Stink or don't stink. That's kind of your choice, and you'll know if people aren't hanging around you in between stops. <laughs> Kidding, okay hygiene we'll just leave it at that everybody has their own hygiene preferences high maintenance low maintenance whatever the case is uh, the second thing is toiletries you just never know on the road uh, you could be riding and just have a sudden need to go and you want to be able to go so keep a roll of toilet paper tucked in your bag you know long road trip next thing would be a first aid kit um, but along with first aid kit I keep one you can look at there's a um, Dan Dan the Fireman has a website called Rescue Essentials. You can go there and get an individual first aid kit. And I've got one in my saddlebag. I took it on the way to Sturgis. It's just, it's got like a tourniquet. It's got some gauze, pressure dressing type stuff, whatever, for the stuff that you can immediately apply until the professionals get there, EMS or whatever. But along with the face, uh, first aid kit, um, Sonny even brought up again in that free ride piece, um, painkillers. Do you get headaches on the road after long times if you miss a meal or something? Uh, and acids. Do you get heartburn? You know, if you, eat a, if you eat a good meal but you're paying for it on the road, all these things, headaches, and acid, heartburn, and digestion, that kind of takes away from your concentration. So you want to make sure you have, if you, if you know you get that kind of stuff, make sure you pack that stuff. Um, definitely recommend having a tender on your battery for trickle charging and also find, you can get them online, amazon.com, uh, compact battery jumper kits. Okay, they sell these on Amazon. Dirty D's has a video, and I'll include that in the links here. That he pr uh, found a one that does a simple, quick battery jump. You just never know. Uh, Toolkit. I think everybody should know that. If you should have some kind of a measure of a toolkit, something with the basics: wrenches, torque wrenches, Allen wrenches, simple stuff, screwdriver, flat tips, those kind of things. Something in case something happens, you can address it. You know, your mount for your GoPro falls off or something, or a mechanical piece. You never know. Medications, prescription eyeglasses, that kind of stuff. Just make sure you're bringing all that stuff. Don't forget that a lot of people are on medications. If you need something regular, make sure you're bringing it. Um, Sonny brought up a good one also, and I had this on my list already The uh, on his Friday free ride piece like this yesterday. Uh, chargers, power strips, and power packs. So cell phones, GoPros, laptops, whatever it is you're bringing, you make sure you have some kind of a power strip or even a power bank. Again, you can find those on Amazon. Just look at the, the Sonny's video he did this past Friday. He held up a power strip it's like a, a regular old electrical power strip we're all used to but they were all USB ports instead of uh, AC power ports 
Um, another thing somebody else brought up is earplugs, okay? If you have tinnitus in either ear, if you have any hearing loss, you don't want to compound that on this kind of a ride. You're going to be riding either in groups or individual, but it's long rides all day. Exhaust is going to be in your ears, okay? So recommend earplugs. Um, clothing. So what we're going to touch on this is, is not so much individual pieces like t-shirts, shirts, all that. It's more for I'm going to say pack for the ride and the destination, but and debatably you'd want to pack more for the ride. Okay, every time my wife and I go on a road trip on our bikes, even when we're in a car actually, but every time we go on a road trip, I'm looking at my weather app for the entire time we're going to be out on the road, whether it's on the trip to the location or at the destination and on the way home. Usually most apps will put you out, can predict you, give you a rough estimation 10 mile, 10 days out. Now, having said that, don't just like, you know, I, this goes without saying, but I don't just look at the location where I'm living. I map it for every location we're traveling through for the weather of those days. So you want to pack for that. That's, it goes back to what we talked about before, the rain gear, uh, cold weather gear. You just, I, it, you hate to overpack, but you know your tolerances, you know your preferences. Every single person does pack the best way for you, but you want to pack mainly for the ride because I've always thought when you get to the destination, if you don't have something that you need, you know, it gets a little chillier, it was unforecasted there, you can always buy a jacket or a hoodie or something to keep yourself warm at the location. But when you're on the road, you're not trying to drop off at five different exits for Walmart or anything to get something you forgot or don't have. So, um, again, different habits. You know, I'm, I'll go into some of the silliness, but some people pack two pairs of jeans and they just rotate through those jeans throughout a long, long, long trip. You'll see some people out of Sturges that pack a couple of shirts to get there with and one pair of jeans because they're going to buy some Sturgis shirts or some souvenir shirts while they're there. So that again is totally on the person. Um, another point my wife brought up, so lodging, okay, hotel, you got no worries really, right? Because what you bring with you and you take into the hotel is going to be what you bring out with you. Just make sure you don't leave anything there. If you have a gun, if you're taking a gun with you, make sure you pack that and don't forget that stuff. Somebody also said they're camping the whole way, so that's really cool, but I'm not camping, but just make sure you, you know, do you need a camping tent? Do you need a sleeping bag? Are you gonna be at locations each time for showering? I mean, or whatever hygiene or whatever you're gonna do, if you're doing the camping route, you wanna make sure every single stop we're gonna be going through, hopefully you're doing the, the necessary research for those campgrounds or locations in those areas to that accept camping, so, and you have the resources you need. And the last piece I'm gonna cover is shipping stuff to Sturgis. This is not unheard of. We've done it before, you'll hear it a lot. You'll actually get to Sturgis and you will see their local post office in Rapid City or in Main Street Sturgis towards the end of the week and at the beginning they can kind of get full because people do that. They will ship stuff directly to the hotel or wherever they're staying and they will ship stuff home. You know, you, you're not, you don't want to pack everything. Some people ship everything they brought with them except for the clothing and stuff they need to get back with. It, it varies. Everybody's going to be different. But uh, that's really all our stuff. You just have to think about if you want to ship stuff home from wherever you're coming from, if you want to ship stuff down to Florida, if you want to ship stuff from Florida, whatever the case might be, but that is an option. It's one a lot of people have done in the past. Um, and the last thing you'll see in the links below, I'm going to include links for uh, Dirty D's, Wit Mesa, uh, Ride with Two Indians, Adam Sandoval. I'm going to even probably include Sonny's uh, and Angie's Badger one this Friday talking about tips of items to bring and pack. So that basically covers that. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up, hit anybody else up, DM me on IG, Facebook, whatever. I have some, I don't have a you know ton as, as, as many people, but I have a few long road trips under my belt and have, have habits, and I'm sure we all have different habits. So look forward to seeing everybody out there. Uh